Hello, welcome to video number seven in the Ethereum Mechanics video series. My name is Robert Distinti. Uh, if you want to understand what Ethereal Mechanics is, please check out the introductory video, which is EMV001, video number one. Uh, this video, we're going to talk about the cycles of science and how to break them. Unfortunately, we've got a problem with science. Science uh, goes in cycles, and these cycles end up causing a, uh, re uh, a delay or a, a pause or a impede scientific progress. That's the best way to say it. And part of the problem is human nature. And by understanding human nature, we can break free of the cycles of science. And you can read the rest of this um, slide on your own if you pause it, because I'm just going to go quickly. All right, so let us theorize. In order to explore the cycles of science, as I call them, um, let's, let's hyp hypothesize or theorize about a mythical society and a mythical universe. And this mythical society, they have a mystery of the universe, and we're going to represent that mystery of the universe as a little blue box here, and what they do is they, they have these observations of the universe, which I'm going to use numbers of their observations of the universe, or, or their, and they put them into the theory, and they come out with a result from the theory. Okay, and so let's say that they're a new species, they don't really know much about the universe or nature, and and so they come up and they have to come up why do we get four out when we put two and two in and obviously because they're new at this and counting chickens is the first thing they learned how to do they say ah it must be addition so addition must be the mystery of the secret box that's the mystery of the nature that they're looking for so what happens so this university graduates all these people with this newfound knowledge these people here well they want to go off and start businesses and use this newfound knowledge to, to make money and to improve the lives of the people. So they go looking for money. They go looking for money from governments who have taxpayers. They go looking for money grants from universities who have benefactors and students. They go looking for loans from banks who have depositors. They go looking for money from Wall Street who has investors. Then they go off and form industry. They uh, make inventions. They do research. They do government research on you know, space and all that other stuff. That's great. And, 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 and what might happen is these investors, depositors, benefactors, taxpayers may actually be employed by these people in these industries. So the money's starting to go around in circles. That's where the problem is. And then the other thing, it gets even worse because now Nobel Prizes are granted, knighthoods are granted, the church gets involved in somehow, other degrees are awarded with the research that they come up with, and they get Pro television programs on the Discovery Channel explaining about wormholes and all kinds of stuff that they theorize from their stuff. And then they, they have bit pieces on things like The Simpsons or the Big Bang Theory, yada, yada, yada. It goes on and on and on and on. So what happens is later on, somebody discovers, hey, you know, we got this number one now. Let's put number one into the to special box. And they get one out. And like, oh my goodness. Hold on. Well, if we had two and two is four before and one and one is one, it must be multiplications inside the box. It's, it must be multiplication. Well, unfortunately, that causes a problem. Because all these people that have gotten all this money from all their investors, okay, are going to be, their livelihood is going to be threatened now. And so, obviously, they're going to go into denial stage. Oh, this guy's an idiot. And you can read all these things. I'm not going to read all the stuff. You can pause the thing and read it. Hope you can read it from up there. And so, and I'm showing a picture of Galileo here. Um, and so he becomes a threat to their credibility, and if he's a threat to their credibility, their ability to get loans, investments, grants, whatever, becomes a problem, and their livelihoods are in jeopardy, and the people that work for them, their livelihoods are in jeopardy. So there's going to be a denial stage. But then what happens is as Gal this new theory becomes accepted, well, now these people that were denying it are going to look even worse as far as their credibility goes. They were just denying it. Now everyone's starting to accept it. So these credibilities looking even worse. So now they're going to change their their method of a, of approach. Instead, they're going to say, oh, well, gee, we knew it all along. We're going to try and say, oh, yeah, we're going to steal it. And this is the silliness that goes on with science that keeps science suppressed. And you can read all of these little bullets here. I'm not going to read them for you. All right, then let's go even later on. Somebody says, well, gee, you know, I'm, I'm going to put the politics aside right now. Let's just talk about the science itself without the politics. So then we come across, and somebody else makes a new discovery that we don't have to put the same input into the box. And they put one and two in, and they get one out. And now they're like at a total confusion of what's in the box now. 
All right, so let's put all of the, the different observations down. So in the beginning, they came up with 2 and 2 is 4, and they had addition. Then they came up with a new observation. Now they got two observations, and now they have multiplications. And then they come up with a third observation, and they got a to the b. And then they realize they don't have to, they can swap. The, the inputs should be swappable. Then you can put 2 and 1 in, and 2 and 1, you get still get 1, so it's not a to the b, and so now they're at a loss. And things get more, co it's harder to fit models now as the observations go on. And so what we learn by just learning through this cycle as, as, as new observations are made and as, as, as the species learns more, the old models explain less and less. And what happens is the new models get, the, 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 the amount of newer models that could fit the observations gets fewer and fewer and fewer. But the newer th models that they come up with explain more, like a to the b explains three of the observations, where a times b only explains two of the three that they, at this point. Okay, but the point is, no matter how many observations we take, we can never ever be sure what's in the box. All we can say is we're going to come up with models that mimic the behavior. That's all they do is mimic the behavior. Models do nothing but mimic the behavior. Okay, so as we keep on going, we come up with the tenth rule of acquisition. And from that, what we learned there, there are only two types of theories, wrong theories and theories that have yet to be proven wrong. Uh, I don't know who said that. I might, have, I might have been saying that for years and just forgot that I'm the one who said it. I did a quick internet search. I couldn't find anybody who said it, so I don't know who to give credit to. Uh, I mean, one day we may actually get stuff right, uh, but it's a good idea not to assume we're ever right. A good idea never to assume anything we know is irrefutable. Uh, if, and the other thing is old giants, the, the old theories that we have. If they can withstand the new observations, they're good. If they do not predict the new observations, they should be thrown out. We should not have these false uh, appreciation for things that aren't right. Um, now let me introduce you to the junk science curve, which is this little curve down here. Whenever we come up with a new theory, it's most ultimately going to be wrong. And as we make more and more observations, effort is observations, labor, money, and time. So the more effort we spend, and the newer observations we make, we can start reducing the error because as, as our new models, as we get newer and newer models, they explain more and more and more. As they explain more and more and more, their error becomes less and less and less and less. We may never ever get to the truth line. We should never assume we're ever going to get there. Okay, so we need to turn things on its head. Instead of doing experiments that verify experiments, we need to junk, short circuit the junk science curve. We need to find as many models of theories that fit the observation as soon as possible and then perform experiments to disprove as many as we can. And that way there we can push this curve down earlier and faster than before and we can help eliminate some of the nonsense with the politics that goes on. Because the sooner we get to a quicker answer, the more likely that when people put their lives on a theory it's going to earn, end up being a decent enough theory that they can earn a living on and not get their funding re revoked. Okay, so in short-circuiting the junk science curve, what should have happened on the first observation, they should have had a computer that came up with all the possible mathematical probability, and they would have seen that they have infinite number of mathematical models that can fit the observation. And then they could choose newer experiments that help reduce the ones that are wrong, and hopefully when they get to the bottom, they can... Uh, have a, uh, at least a model that's better than their first one. It may not be the right one, but at least it's going to be better. And I'm going to show you this technique when we look at new induction and how I found the new induction model. I basically wrote a computer program that came up that would search through 45,000 different geometries of physics to find the new induction model. I actually came up with two models that fit very well, and we're going to go into that. Uh, but what we should do is we should complement the Nobel Prize with the Nobel Prize. We should give out awards for people who disprove theories of physics because that will get us down the maze of science faster. Okay, remember the rule of theory number th uh, the rule of acquisition number three. Bad theories are like the wrong path in a maze. The sooner they are abandoned, the quicker we can solve the maze. Okay, don't get involved with any theory idea that you're not willing to walk away from in 30 seconds. Okay, and every textbook or educational video should have the following disclaimer. The information contained herein represents one possible explanation of presently known phenomena, observation, and artifacts. As we learn more, 
theories can and will change. Okay, so we need to turn science upside down. Instead of wasting money to confirm theories, we need to spend money, uh, which is spending money on the impossible, because you can never confirm theories. The only way, the more productive avenue is to disprove theories. Okay, and we should provide reward, rewards and incentives to those who disprove theories. Reward the giant hunters with the no bull prize. Uh, and then we should, uh, new theories should be developed by short-circuiting the junk science curve so we can have a better better showing for our investment in doing research. So what's next? In video number eight, uh, we're going to demystify and improve science. We're going to show you that pretty much science we're doing today is not much more evolved than monkey see, monkey do. We need to change that. And then we're going to demystify math. That's a very quick video. And then, uh, in this, we're going to introduce the epochs of natural structure eons. Video number 10, we're going to use the eons of Mother Nature. And I'm going to show you a different way to look at the universe and nature. And in fact, it's pretty interesting. There's a conjecture part of this video where, well, you'll have to see the conjecture in here. It's pretty interesting. I'm not going to explain it now. It might start getting off on a tangent. Uh, then we're going to recap all the rules of nature to date, and plus uh, the rules of pain that we have. After we're done with these, these uh, uh, foundation series, we're going to go back into the quest for the ether. And by the way, in case you're interested, the mystery model is A to the B minus 1, B to the A minus 1. Okay, so if you could donate, I would really appreciate that. Uh, thank you.